All right. Okay, let's start. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Tatiana Mota, the Student Engagement Manager here at StudyCans. And uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, what you can do now to plan your studies in Australia. My colleague, Danny Lopez, is going to be with me as well talking to you. And the idea is that we can, uh, during this talk, help you with some information, some important information for you to do your planning to come to Australia in the future for your studies, okay? So uh, let's go ahead. Okay, so in today's webinar, we are gonna be talking about these topics over here. So study options, study, in, uh, study the cities, how are you gonna study uh, and research about the city you're gonna be living when you come to Australia. Benefits of living in a regional area, services available for international students, and uh, the Q&A, we are going to, uh, we have already actually received a few questions about the, these topics, and we are going to be addressing them throughout the webinar, okay? All right, so the first topic, which is study options, here we're gonna be uh, sharing with you the possibilities you have to uh, study in Australia. Most of the international students who come to Australia um, decide to come either for six months to one year to study English, but there are some other options as well. So the first one, English language courses, you're gonna be, when you start, um, studying a language course, you're going to be assessed in your first day and uh, going to study in a group according to your level. Many students uh, also prepare to do the IELTS exam, which is going to help them anyway in a future course, or if they are planning to apply for another visa in the future, do a master's or a PhD. So IELTS is gonna be super important anyway. Uh, vocational education and training. So this is what we call VET courses. The VET courses are vocational courses that last from six months to two years. And they will give you uh, all the knowledge to develop skills for working in Australia, right? Uh, so we have different kinds of VET courses, certificates, diploma, and advanced diploma. So usually students need to go to the VET schools websites to select and to check the courses that are available. And many international students actually, when they come to Australia, they start studying an English language course, and then they extend their studies by doing a VET course. So it's interesting for you to research that as well, because if you plan to stay in Australia in the future, to work and live in Australia, maybe the VET courses are gonna be a good option for you, okay? And then we have the university degrees, uh, bachelor's, master, and PhDs. Here in Cairns, where we live, we have two universities who are um, providing different courses in different fields uh, in all these bachelor's, master, and PhD. So if you are interested to know more, just contact us. All right, let's go ahead then. So now we are going to go to cost of living in Australia. We are going to share with you some average um, prices and costs, of course, depending on the city you're going to be living. Uh, if it's a big city or a small town, these costs change, of course, but there is a, an average that we are going to be sharing with you according to the uh, Study in Australia uh, website. So if you need to check more information, just go to www.studyinaustralia.com 
www.gov.au and all this information is gonna be there and much more, okay? So in terms of accommodation, this is the average we are gonna find, you are gonna find when you move to Australia to study, okay? Usually hostels and guest houses are gonna start at $90 uh, per week. Usually in Australia, you pay your rent by fortnight, every fortnight or two weeks. Uh, but this can be negotiated with your, um, with whoever you are renting your place from. Okay, uh, shared rental. So you, if you share a house, usually students do that a lot. They share rooms, they share a place, and each one will have a room and a bathroom sometimes, or they share the bathroom. It really depends on what you're looking for, but this can start at 95 Australian dollars per week, okay? If you're going to live on campus, it starts at 110 per week. Homestay. Homestay is when you live with uh, an Australian family. It's like a host family. You're going to be living with them and experiencing uh, the Australian culture by sharing your life with an Australian family. In this case, uh, it's going to be starting at 235 as an average. Okay. If you're going to rent a place for you, a unit, an apartment, um, this is going to start at 185. It really depends, but this, uh, depending on the number of people who you're going to be sharing with, it's you, of course, you're going to split the course, the, co uh, the costs, right? And for boarding schools, this is the um, yearly price, okay, 11,000 to 22,000 a year. Let's go ahead and other living expenses. So uh, for groceries and eating out, it's gonna start from 140 till 280 per week. It's always good to say that uh, it really depends on your expenses, on what you like to do, on where you like to eat, right? So this makes a huge difference. Actually, you, uh, if you eat at home and uh, you don't go out a lot, this could be much less than whatever is in here, right? Uh, for example, we were discussing Danny and I before the webinar, and we, we just came into the conclusion that for groceries in cans where we live, we can spend much less than this, right? Uh, for gas electricity, starting at 10, phone and internet starting at 15 per week, public transport, 30 to 60 per week. But it's interesting to, to keep in mind that if you live close to where you're gonna be studying, you can just walk to your uni or to your vet school, or you can bike ride. So this cost can be uh, much less than that, right? Yes, and actually, Tatiana, I would like to add something there about the gas and electricity. Normally, when you um, rent a place, uh, you need to pay those uh, bills. But when you rent a, uh, or you share a room or you are in a shared house, normally that price is already included in your rent. So anyway, we put it here because it's important for you to know the, in general, what are the expenses involved, but no, no in all the cases is gonna apply. It depends on the, the case. And same thing with phone and internet. So sometimes the internet as well is included in your home, uh, but you will have to, to, to get a phone plan, an internet plan for, for your phone. So that one could be, it depends on your needs. So normally you have Wi-Fi at home, Wi-Fi at the school, Wi-Fi everywhere. So maybe you can um, get a cheaper program so for example i have 30 dollars per month not per week so this again this is an average but uh later we can discuss a little more uh specific uh for the students living in camps awesome thank you danny so uh for car after purchase starting at 150 and again it can be much less than that right Entertainment between 80 and 150 per week, 
But really, there is so much stuff to do outdoors, at least in Cairns, where we live, right, Danny? And it's just free, right? Um, the beaches, the outdoor activities, waterfalls, parks. So there is so much stuff to do, and it's just for free. Let's go ahead then. Uh, so just wrapping up here in terms of the cost of living, uh, as an average as well, so you are going to spend, you, you need to plan before coming to Australia to spend around $21,000 a year uh, for your living in Australia. If you're coming with a partner, you need to add uh, around $7,000 more to that expense. And if you are bringing children, uh, you need to add at least $3,000 more for children to this uh, total amount, right? This is uh, an idea for you to plan your budget. Education costs. So uh, for schools, which what, what does it mean school? It means, um, you know, from childcare to high school, this is gonna be uh, starting at uh, 7,800 till $30,000 really depends. It depends on the school you're going to be enrolled or your children. Uh, so it's very important to do your research well before, right? English language studies, around 300 per week, depending on the course level. Uh, it also really depends. So in Kent, uh, definitely, uh, we can definitely find cheaper courses uh, since it's a small town in a regional area but it really depends when you do your research on the internet, you're gonna be able to find these different uh, costs and compare. And uh, are, uh, I would like to add as well that sometimes the price of the English course per week can, can differ of how long is gonna be your total studies. So our promotions or discounts, so for example, if you study six months, maybe it's 250, but if you study nine months, it's gonna be 230 per week. So how you know, because every time can change the promotion, depends of the school, uh, depends of the time of the year. Um, so the best way is to your education agent. They can give you the information about what are the prices in uh, for those courses, depends of how long you want to, to study. Sometimes they give you, for six months study, they give you one month extra. And I know that nowadays they have some specials for those uh, potential students who want to come to Australia to study. So again, this is just like an average, but um, talking specific about Cairns could be much cheaper than that. Cool. All right, so for VET courses, vocational education and training, starting at um, 4,000 till 22,000, depending if it's a certificate, diploma or advanced diploma. For bachelor degrees, 20,000 to 45,000, of course, depending on the course as well. Uh, masters, 22 to $50,000 and PhDs, 18,000 to $42,000. Okay, let's go ahead. Employability. So while you are there in your home country, thinking about Australia and uh, making your plans, I'm sure you're thinking about how you're going to be able to find a job that will allow you to live in Australia and pay for your expenses, right? So, um, of course, here in the Cairns, uh, Study Cairns Student Hub, we offer a lot of services and then he's gonna be talking to you about this later on. Uh, but uh, besides the support we offer, we have some tips for you here that we are gonna share. So in terms of industry options, usually uh, international students, when they come to Australia, they are gonna be working uh, in the hospitality sector, um, doing casual jobs that are paid per hour. And sometimes they're gonna have uh, part-time jobs. 
Uh, students who do a PhD are the only ones who are able to work full time, which means 40 uh, hours per week. But the other students uh, can only work 20 hours a week. So usually they look for jobs, uh, casual jobs and part time jobs that will allow them to work and study as well. So usually um, hosp the hospitality sector, working uh, in restaurants, hotels, especially here in Kent, we have like most, like 90% of our international students are working in hospitality. And which is great because usually in bigger cities like Sydney, uh, Melbourne and um, Brisbane, uh, students, usually most of the international students are gonna be working with cleaning, in cleaning jobs. Uh, and this doesn't really allow them to interact with people and practice their English. Here in Kansas, we are in uh, one of the um, biggest uh, tourist um, attractions in Australia. So we have many hospitality opportunities for students, and which is great. And they are now working uh, in restaurants as waitresses or waiters, baristas, kitchen hand, and in hotel in general as well with customer service. So these usually are the main options students have. But if you have already a qualification from home, sometimes you have a bachelor already, you have a career in your home country, and if you have a good level of English, uh, you will definitely be able to look and find some positions uh, according to your experience, right? It's going to take a little more effort, but it's totally possible. And uh, we here in the Student Hub uh, are able to help you with that. Second topic, LinkedIn. If you don't have your LinkedIn yet, please, Work on it, right? Uh, study about LinkedIn, create your own LinkedIn because here in Australia, this is super important, right? Uh, to have a very well done LinkedIn uh, with lots of information, uh, start creating, uh, connecting with people through your LinkedIn because sometimes you don't even know, but you might even get a job offer uh, through LinkedIn and you are still there. You didn't even come to Australia. And this happens a lot in Australia uh, because they use LinkedIn all the time to recruit uh, professionals, right? So have your LinkedIn in English. Well done, nice photo, okay? And this will help you as well. Third topic, seek.com. So seek is the biggest employability, employment, job hunting app we have in Australia. So my suggestion is download the app, the Seek uh, app on your phone. Start searching for jobs that are related to your area just to do your research, just to understand what the employers in Australia are looking for. And maybe you have those qualifications or maybe you don't. It's always good to know uh, why you are there, if you're gonna be able to find jobs in your area or not, what you need to prepare yourself better. So when you come to Australia, you are more qualified to actually uh, land these jobs and, uh, and also get familiar with the, the app, with uh, the job, you know, in Australia, the job searches in Australia. Uh, sometimes there is some kind of vocabulary from your sector that you don't know yet and that it's good to know. And this is very important for you to do right now. Do your research, get familiar uh, with the app and start looking for, you know, the jobs that you might be able to get when you come here. Next topic, certificates. So there are some um, jobs in Australia that request some certificates that you might be able to do when you arrive here. So Danny, would you like to give some examples about this for us? Yes. So what happens, sometimes the students arrive really excited to start looking for a job and start applying. 
but it's important that you understand how is the labor market here working. And for some specific jobs, you need an additional certificate that depends on the certificate, can take an hour or can take a day. So for example, normally for hospitality industries, because you are handling alcohol, you need a certificate that is called RSA, Responsible Service of Alcohol. That one you can do it online, that one you can, in a three, four hours, you can get it. And, and you must need, you, you must have it um, before to apply for those jobs in, in that industry. So as Tatiana mentioned, when you start to having a look the job opportunities and on SIG, you can have a look what are the certificates they are requesting. So that, that way you can have an idea what you need to do before. And if it's any specific certificate, you need to get it. And as well, planning the budget, they say, okay, I need to do this investment for this certificate um, before I start to apply for that job, for that industry. So as well, we have another one that is the blue card. That one um, can take a little longer, can take a month to get it and it's online. Uh, so is this type of things that you can start to have a look and, and see uh, what job opportunities you can apply. So when we mention to, to, to do your homework and then start searching while you are there, is to see as well what job opportunities the city that you will choose is gonna provide, and, but put it in more um, real scenario for your case. Okay, be more aware of your English level, be more aware of your skills so that way you can see, okay, according to my case, to my skill, uh, English level, to the skills that I have, I think this uh, city is better for me because it's going to help me more in my purpose. So that is other important thing. Always keep in mind the purpose of your trip. If your purpose is just to have an experience overseas or if your purpose is as well improve your English, those things is really important that you keep always in mind when you're gonna have the when you're gonna choose what is the best city for you. Cool. All right. And uh, the fair work ombudsman, Danny. All right. So as well, when you are working in, in Australia, ah, before then the fair work was uh, work ombudsman. Uh, we were talking about wages. So the. Here, uh, we could say the average for uh, now what is $20, but uh, that can, can change, depends of the occupation, can be higher, of course, but no less than $20. No, any job can be less than $20, could be higher than that, depends of the occupation, the level of responsibility, uh, depends of the experience, of course, but no less than $20. In average, uh, and the fair word abusement is actually that organization, uh, government organization that makes sure that you um, have the rights and you know they provide all that information for you to know how is working the um, labor market here. Because even that you are an Australian, you have the same rights and responsibilities than an Australia because you are. are with the street and visa, you are allowed to work in Australia. So it's important to, for you to know, because of course it could be different from your home country, how it's working the things uh, over there and how it's working the things over here. So that is the uh, World Abusement Organization. Uh, it's good for you to, to have a look, to use to the page, to be familiar what they're doing and, and to understand a little bit how is, uh, Look at the legislation here uh, in terms of working in Australia. Awesome, Benny, thank you. So here guys, you have like an overview of what you need to look for while you are there still, right? Planning your, your studies in Australia. So if you know that as an average, uh, you're gonna be earning around $20 an hour, you can make a planning 
of, for example, how, how much, how many hours you need to work to be able to um, uh, get an, uh, the, the money you need to pay your school fees and stuff like that, right? Or even while you are back home already, still at home, uh, have an idea of how much you are going to need to save while you are there before coming to Australia, right? Okay, let's go ahead then. So the information that we have provided before is in general about Australia, but that, that was topics of, of things that you should search uh, when you're thinking uh, which is the best city for me to go and study. So this is another thing that you should be aware. I didn't know uh, because this, this is something specific in Australia, but here, depends on the city, they can classify the cities as a regional area or not. So what, are these not, what is not a regional area? Is big cities like uh, Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney. Those are big cities that are not considered as a regional area. So what we, we want to share with you, and that, that is important this term, because uh, studying in a regional area provides extra benefits for you. So first one, normally regional areas because are smaller uh, are cheaper uh, cost of life. They call it, it's more affordable the cost of life, or the cost of living, uh, because of the transportation is cheaper. Sometimes uh, it's not transportation involved because they are walk distance or by bicycle. So it's less, um, less money that you need to spend in transportation, same thing with accommodation. So if you are living 10, 15 minutes away from your place, you don't need to, to spend money in, in, in transportation and you, it's time as well. That is connected to the quality of life because instead of spending one hour in the bus, you can do other stuff and you can just walk in 10 minutes and you're gonna be in your school. So uh, generally the cost of living in uh, study in regional areas is much cheaper. Lifestyle, because it's not a huge place, it's not that crowded. Um, I am originally from Colombia, Bogota, and Bogota has, uh, unfortunately has a terrible traffic. So here is the traffic at all. And that for me makes a difference. So in a step of, of spending one hour in the traffic, I can maybe meet with my friends and have, uh, you know, a better balance between my studies, working, and uh, social life. And normally, the regional areas is more relaxed um, environment. Uh, community feel. What does that mean? Is more when you are in a regional area. Is are, are more chances that you make better connections, um, that your networking is stronger because you have the opportunity to meet people and connect with them. In the big cities, sometimes everyone is busy, everyone is in their own business. You are one number more in the city. No one knows anyone uh, because they cannot make those connections because they are so busy in their own things. So it's important when we are overseas and it's maybe the first time that we are in a different country, for us it's important to make those connections with other people. And when we are in a regional area, you can, it's easier to make those connections. And most of the students living in the same area. So it's easier to find out and feel part of a community no feel like a one more in the city. All right, discover the real Australia. So you have the chance to really um, be involved in the Australian culture. Uh, Australia is multicultural uh, country, but as well, of course, they have their own things. And that is the way that normally you can um, experience that in the regional areas. So for example, here in Cairns, uh, we have more contact with the Aboriginal culture. 
and we have the rainforest, we have the Great Barrier Reef. So you will really uh, experience like a day's uh, real Australia. Uh, government initiatives. So because most of the students at the beginning go to the first cities, the big cities, so that is already crowded. So what the government do, is, what the government does is to uh, have initiatives for students to come and study in regional areas. And that is with flexibilities or with extra benefits. So for example, in this case, we have the postgraduate visa. When you are studying in a regional area, that postgraduate visa is gonna be longer. Of course, it depends of your studies and the regional area, but it's gonna be for sure extra time where you can work full time you don't need to, after you finish your studies, you're gonna work full time and you need in, and you can stay without studying during, during that postgraduate visa. So it's a huge advantage. Um, and as well, uh, they have, we have in regional areas, we have additional opportunities for migration. So uh, for example, with the postgraduate visa, if you get an uh, extra year to stay in, in in Australia, normally the postgraduate visa can take 24, um, sorry, 18 months, um, but you're gonna get that extra year. So it's gonna be around three years that you can stay. So that is give you the opportunity to get experience in Australia and why not to, to have a look uh, of options to migrate to Australia because you will have the requirements to do it. Uh, or because you are studying in, in a regional um, area, you're gonna get five point, points ad additionally for a skill visa. So it depends on the visa, uh, you may have a, a additional uh, benefits as well in regional areas are specific visas that just apply for regional areas that I just create for those regional areas. So for migration purpose, you will have more options and opportunities if you live and live a study in a regional area. So now that you more or less understand what is the regional area and the benefits, I would like to talk about what is Cairns. So Cairns, uh, this is a beautiful city. We are located in Queensland, in the state of Queensland, we are a north of Queensland. Uh, we have a amazing weather here. Uh, there, you can see where we are. Mm. And we have two of the most important heritage um, things that is the Great Barrier Reef and the rainforest. So, and as well, you will see one um, iconic uh, the place of Cairns, that is the lagoon as well. So in Cairns, we have, even that Australia has um, the four seasons, in, in Cairns, we have really just two seasons and is always summer, which is amazing. So why did it's you- It's amazing, Cairns? really. <laughs> yes, it is. We have to say, let me add, Danny, that uh, we normally say that we live in paradise. And I couldn't agree more because every day you wake up and you open your windows and it's beautiful outside. It's a welcoming environment and there is so much stuff to do uh, outdoors and you just feel as if you were uh, on holidays the whole year. Of course, sometimes students are uh, have a lot of assignments to do they are stressed at uni or at school and this is part of life right but when you get out of the school you have a number of outdoor experiences around so this is amazing really yes yes it is so i'm going to share, uh, share with you why to choose tense as a study destination so as we mentioned before, everything is connected and, and the idea is that you have the best experience here while you are studying in, in Australia. So, and always that 
connected with the purpose why you came first here to Australia. So in Cairns, uh, we have different job opportunities and different industries that the students can work with. In um, but uh, I could say as as Tatiana mentioned before, the most popular one is the hospitality industry. Why? Because um, normally the students are studying in the morning. So hospitality is uh, evenings and weekends. So is the, is the industry that fit the best to the students profile. And it's great because doesn't matter. It's great in any aspect. Why? If you have a basic level of English, this is a great opportunity to be involved in the English community to improve your English skills. As better English you have, as better opportunity you, you will have as well. So yes, at the beginning can be a little challenging, but go, uh, slowly, slowly you can get better and better. That we have seen, unfortunately, a student who has choose another choose another place and where their English wasn't um, improving that well. And the idea is, and then they, they feel that they haven't um, getting that advantage. So if you are from the beginning, keep clear about that, it's gonna be the best. Like a, don't, um, like you need to really immerse to the Australian and English um, speakers uh, culture and activities. And one of the, the best one is of course the, the job opportunities. So in Cairns, of course, the industry and the organization are aware of the uh, how international students can help to um, grow up the community and the idea is to help each other. So they are always open to receive new international students for different type of jobs. But it's more than hospitality, we have different industries where the students can be involved, all right? As well, camps is a friendly and safe place um, because it's a multicultural city. You will find people from everywhere in, in the world, which is great, which is gonna help a lot uh, with your English uh, and connections, of course. So as I mentioned, I'm originally from Colombia and when I came here, I met the first Colombian uh, or Spanish speaker after six months. So of course my, my English uh, improved a lot during that time because I have to speak in English. But it was great because as well, I met people from other countries and not just learn about English as well learn about other cultures. So that's why we say the, the Cairns is uh, culturally diverse. Uh, place. Uh, lower cost of living. So Tatiana have shared with you before the general cost of living in Australia. But as I mentioned here is a little cheap, it's, it's cheaper for sure. It's a fact that the transportation. So as a student, normally the students are moving around with bicycles, which is, yes, you need um, an initial investment, of course, to buy the bicycle, but then you can save a lot of money. And even if you sometimes need to take bus, if you are studying in a vocational uh, institution or university institution, you can uh, get a 50% discount in the um, transportation. Accommodation, I could say as well, is much cheaper uh, because it's closer to the institution, uh, educational inst institutions. And we have different options of accommodations and that we are, uh, we can trust then of course to recommend you guys. Uh, and it's, they, they have different budgets. So if you want a single room with your own toilet or if you want a shared room, we have different options for different budgets. But I could say that for a single room uh, can be between a hundred dollars and $880 where you have your, just the space for yourself. 
and from 10, 15 minutes from your school, walking distance. So it's a huge difference. And as well, because we are north of Queensland and because of the weather here is more tropical, vegetables and fruits are cheaper in the normal, we have here a rustic, that is, is, is a, it's a place where it's fresh food. So there is cheaper to, to get those uh, fresh food, like vegetables and, and, and fruits. So if normally, yes, I'm not saying that you are not going to, to eat outside, but normally you will eat at least, uh, you will cook for Monday to Friday. So it's gonna be much cheaper. Tropical weather, so that it makes the difference about the style, about the atmosphere. So as Tatiana say, we feel in holidays every day. So even though you are studying and of course during the exam, exam period, you're gonna get a little stress, the environment is gonna help you to keep calm and keep the right balance. And um, as well, that include in, even in the clothes that you're gonna buy. So I didn't, I wasn't that sure when I came the first time and I brought a lot of, a lot of things in, in my suitcase was so big, but the truth is I, I didn't need that. And it's much cheaper because it's easier that you buy and that you get your clothes washing and it's dry the same day. So you do not need uh, like a huge jacket and a lot of things to, to be here. And we have top education in a relaxed lifestyle, as we have mentioned it. Quality of accommodation, as I said, different budgets. Um, we have an international and domestic um, airport, which is important because it's easier to move around. And we have plenty, hundreds, thousands of tourist attractions. And some of them, you don't need them. You don't even need to spend too much money, just put a petrol in the car and the seat. Because as Tatiana said, it are lakes or waterfalls or hiking, more natural um, activities. So yes, you can keep the balance in the way that you have to be around and do some social things and not just study because you know it's to keep the balance. But um, without spending that amount of money. So why not Kent? So now we're gonna talk about what is the Kansas Student Hub. So we are an organization. What are the student services and support for, for you? So one of those is the Kansas Student Hub. We are a no profitable organization. That is mean we don't charge our services. Uh, is free for the students. Doesn't matter where you're from, doesn't matter what are you studying, doesn't matter which institution, as soon as a member of the study camps. Um, but in general, if you are studying in camps and you're an international student, our services are free for you. We are uh, sponsored by members and as well the government. And what we do here is a physical space. It's an office just uh, located in the heart of city where you can come here and say, hello, Danny, hello, Tatiana, I need help, I need this. And we are here to help you. And even, even though that you are, of course now, you are not in Kent yet, you can start contacting us from your home country if you have any questions and we are always happy to help. So what information we provide here is that the options. So we can tell you, look in Kent's are these options and I will mention that later on. Accommodation advice. So if you are thinking, okay, I went to Kent's and I'm gonna study in this institution. Hey, Danny, what is the best accommodation for me? What is the closest one over there? Uh, this is my budget. So we can work in and I can put it in contact with those accommodation um, organization. Migration support. So you come here first with your visa, but then you say, look, Danny, I would like to extend my visa. I want to see what are my options and why not maybe in the future, I am thinking to migrate to Australia. What should I do? So of course we 
we are no experts in that in a field, but we connect you with the right organization and in this case, the immigration agent that gonna give you the best advice in your case. Employment, employment advice. So we uh, help the students to proceed, even to help them to start the resume uh, and to, to find a professional job. So yeah, let students... me just add something there, Danny, if I can. So uh, the employment advice we provide to students, as Danny said, it's a free um, service to international students in Cairns. So this is good for you because we have uh, all the information to help you prepare a resume that attracts uh, the employers, right? The recruiters and also uh, prepare you for looking for jobs, preparing your LinkedIn. And also let's say you have an interview booked. We, have, we you just come to the hub and we help you uh, practice the interview because really, if you don't live in Australia, you're not supposed to know that, right? Uh, you, you don't know how things happen in Australia in terms of job hunting uh, and employability. So uh, when you come here, we are going to provide you with all these details and the support you need to land the job you're looking for. Yes. So we provide that advice and normally that may cost a lot outside, but we do here for free. So yes, that, that is one of the services that we provide. And, and even for those that maybe at the beginning don't have, they just graduate at home and they don't have a experience yet, we as well provide different volunteering uh, services and information and opportunities for them to get experience in Australia. So volunteer here is a huge thing that makes the difference and it's gonna help you a lot to be involved in the Australian um, labor market. All right, it's student services and support. Uh, this is other things that we do as well. So about the health and well-being, we provide different workshops about it uh, as the social activity where we connect with other students, with other nationalities as well. Emotional support, being uh, far away from home uh, in this trip at the beginning, of course, everything is new, it's exciting, you have new friends, but in some point, you miss your family, you miss um, the food, the culture, and you start, or maybe you haven't, you are having troubles to find jobs, or you start to get stressed uh, and depressed. So there is one is important to provide and get this emotional support. So it's just to have a chat as well, talk about those things that you are not feeling that well. Workshops. Uh, are sessions, informative sessions that are uh, important and focused for international students, right? For example, uh, of course, the taxation is different in, in each country. So with the workshop, what we do is to tell you how the, the taxation working here in Australia for international students so are really important. Um, we discuss important topics for, for, for international students. A student discounts as well because we want to go around and travel. We just we don't want just to study. Yes, it's important for sure, but we want to have a look around. So we provide the student discounts. We are no uh, tourist agent. Mm, what we do is we have a members around camps that they working with us, uh, and they know they provide that benefit uh, to the students as a discount. And we have two special programs that are part of as well to the Kansas Student Hub. One is the Student Ambassador Program. This is a um, community of students from different nationalities with different backgrounds, from different institutions. And what they do, we have fun. They represent their, their country and their institution. Uh, we, we organize different things for them. They are the ones who speak out for the community, student community, and as well, they are the ones who represent the student community. And 
part of the being of the, the student ambassador program. They have, this is a volunteer position, but they have benefits. And those benefits are as well networking, uh, sometimes free discounts, or free uh, tours, sorry. So it's great to be part of this um, program. And why not? Maybe when, once you're here, you can be as well a student ambassador. And the other one uh, is the Rainbow Hub. So Kansas, Kansas Student Hub is a welcome space for everyone. And the Rainbow Hub is a special um, program for the LATGB community. So what we want to provide is, is a safe space for them, where they can meet, where they can hang out, where they can uh, share their questions and meet other people because as an international student, you face uh, new challenges, but as well as a part of the LGTB community, you may face extra challenges. So we want to support them as well, for sure. So uh, as we mentioned before, uh, Kens has a specific study options, or oh, not specific, actually, we have different study options. So. We have different levels, as Tatiana mentioned. We have uh, from English uh, classes, but as well we have IELTS, we have Cambridge, we have um, bed courses that could be from um, management and leadership, or can be makeup artists, or remedial massage, or could be as um, uh, as a child care or instrumental as well. So it's different options. And it's something that is good for you to know because when you study English, believe me, here the time flies really quickly. So you say, no, I'm going to Australia for six months and then you feel in love. So it's maybe you won't take that decision now about what is going to be the, the next step, but at least you have the information. So it's good to have a look at the different study options uh, once you finish your English course and how that study options can help you. Um, we have universities, we have even um, of course bachelors and masters and PhD. And this is are the organization, institution, institution um, education here in Kent. And you can start having a look what are different uh, courses that they provide. So, uh, Tatiana, do you want to summarize our presentation? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Danny. Uh, your input was super important. Danny has been in the hub for many years and she knows just everything you need to know. So, if you have any questions or if you're looking for any uh, information you are not able to find while you are at home there, just contact us and we are going to be, uh, Dan is going to be happy to help you out. Okay, so uh, what can you do now to plan your studies in Australia then? Uh, we know that at the moment the borders of Australia are closed, right? And some of you might be there at home, uh, maybe frustrated and waiting for this uh, you know, this to change and the borders open. So uh, this might happen one year from now, let's imagine. So one year uh, just flies, guys, just flies like that. And um, the best thing you can do now is start planning um, and, and making your, um, you know, a spreadsheet with your budget to organize your costs and make sure you have the money or the funds uh, enough to start your studies and then um, move to Australia to live and study, right? So work on your budget, uh, do your research, your research of the study options now that you have an idea of the options you might have. So are you gonna do um, uh, an English course or you're planning to do some other course that you provide you with skills to work in Australia, maybe in a vocational uh, and training course, or you just are keen to do a master's degree or a PhD in Australia. So this will uh, give you like the decision of what to do will actually lead the way, 
right? So if you already have decided what you're going to be doing, just start focusing on looking at the university's websites or the vocational schools' websites or English courses' websites uh, to have an idea of the prices, of the, the requirements they are going to need from you to prepare, for example, documents or whatever is necessary um, besides the, the, the fees, right? Also, study the cities. Uh, try to look at the cities in Australia and see which one offers what you are looking for. So as Danny said before, uh, if you are looking at developing your English skills, you want to become fluent in English, for example. Uh, and if you go to a big city full of people from your country, you might end up hanging out with them in your own language. And this is not good, right? This is going to be a waste of time and money in the end and will give you stress because you're not, not going to achieve the goals you are aiming at, right? So look at the, the cost of living, of course, the kinds of um, the fields of study, the universities or the schools that in that city offer and see if they have the course that you are looking for. Right here in Kent, as Danny said, we have two uh, top level universities with all kinds of different courses in different fields. It's good for you to go, for example, at uh, on the James Cook University website and start, you know, playing around and seeing what courses they have. Central Queensland University as well and TAFE for the vocational courses or other uh, organizations and institutions as well. So have a go, look, do your research. You need to spend some time doing that so you are familiarized with the courses and the, the fees and all that. And try to find the best city that offers what you're looking for, right? And then connect. So if you have your LinkedIn already well done in English, uh, start connecting with people from Australia, from your sector, and um, try to look on Facebook and Instagram as well for um, uh, groups of students in Australia, students from your country in Australia, uh, people who are professionals from your, the same field uh, you are in Australia to see how they were able to, you know, come to Australia, live, study and work here. Try to get this information well before you come to Australia, because when you are here, you are going to be um, achieving what you're looking for, your goals much faster. For you to have an idea, uh, when I came to Australia, I just didn't know uh, much about, um, you know, finding jobs or websites or apps that would uh, allow me to find jobs in Australia and things like that. I didn't know how to write a good resume in the Australian way. So it took me three months to find my first job in my area because I just had to write many resumes and learn from my mistakes and do a lot of research to be able to actually apply for jobs and, and be actually selected for an interview. So if you start doing your planning right now, doing your research, you're going to be able to um, come to Australia and uh, achieve your goals faster than I did, for example, right? Yes, and, Accommodation. And, then there, and there is important information. So as Tatiana said, she she achieved her goal in three months, being looking for a professional job, of course. So it's those things that you need to understand. Maybe at the beginning you will, uh, you say, because happened with some students, they say, look, Danny, I just want to get a job to cover my expenses. Uh, they may have a degree at home, but now they're just studying English and they want to improve their English and they want to have a job to cover their expenses. So yes, uh, that is a different process, but as well, we help with that. And maybe to for find a casual job is faster. When it's a professional job, of course, it's more things involved and more um, training that you need to do, make sure it's, it's a different way to do the things because, for example, 
in my case, to get a casual job at that time took me three weeks. Because the first week you are like a new, you just want to have a look what is the institution and then have a look the uh, how the transportation system working, just to set up yourself. The second week, you're like, okay, now I'm here and I'm gonna start to have a look about the resume and job opportunities. And then after the third week, you start applying. But if you can do, you can start doing that process from home right now. That is what we invite you to do, to be connected, to do, uh, to do your homework research and have a look what are the options. And then you are, at least you are not from zero once you're here. Yes. So accommodation, same thing. So we are happy here in the Student Hub to provide you with some uh, high quality accommodation providers. So just contact us and we are happy to help you with that. Um, and contact us for any support. So if you are lost at home right there and you don't know where to start, just send us a message, send us an email um, to um, connect at studycans.com.au or connect with us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, LinkedIn with StudyCans. And um, we are going to be really happy to give you some information because we know that uh, sometimes you go to a uni website, for example, and it's so much new information. Uh, you just get lost. You don't know if it's uh, what you're looking for or not, if, if it's the right course or not, and stuff like that. So we are happy to help you. Just contact us and we are going to be um, helping you and give you all the support you need. All right? Yeah, so you can okay, contact everyone. us through, through WhatsApp as well, through Instagram. Just send a message. Hey, we go, I would like to meet with you. I, I would like to know a little more about this or educational or any specific question. We are happy to help. So see you in camp soon, hopefully. Yes. All right, everyone, thank you so much for your attention. We hope this was useful for you and um, we hope to see you soon here in Cairns. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.